Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> Welcome. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon out of the Sunset Hour studio in Hollywood, California with UBN Radio TV, Universal Broadcasting Network, and then every Thursday and Saturday syndicated on my CNBC, NBC News radio channel, KCAA. AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and syndicated everywhere that iHeartRadio is. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no CNN, no constantly negative news, and no gossip, no scandal, no K-words, no Kardashian talk, and no T-words. You know who I'm talking about. None of that talk either because I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. And if you're wondering why eight, if you've just tuned in, you know that eight is a homonym, a lucky number in Chinese. So I'm all about good fortune, and that's what it's a homonym for. So I want you to have a good fortune. And we are at the beginning of my year six on the air. I'm coming up on 300 consecutive weeks on the air. Unbelievable. Thank you. Splattering hope and happiness towards and to you and I will be your best advocate for that and if you missed uh, last week I had Sant the lead singer from Santana uh, Andy Vargas and Rick Morrison and we're all going to be a part this weekend do not miss it this Sunday join us at Agape International Spiritual Center where I get my positive roots watered we're trying to break three Guinness World Book Records so um, if you want more information on that, go to thehugalliance.net, uh, go to agapelive.com, show up uh, third service at 1130, and then stay, and we are going to be hugging for the benefit of hugging and breaking records. So join me. That's this coming Sunday. Mark that down. January 21st, celebrating National Hug Day. And this week, I am just really, really happy because I bring in experts not just on, uh, gosh, business-related issues, on how you can be the best that you can be. I also get to have very smart, very wise medical professionals on for anything that you might be going through. And today is one of those days. I have Dr. Jean Lipoff, who's a board-certified pain specialist. After completing his MD at Northwestern University in 1984, he went on to complete advanced pain management training. He's currently a clinical assistant professor at the University of Illinois and a chief science officer at GPTS. SIF focusing on treating PTSD. D. Dr. Lipoff has lectured internationally on his innovations and authored over 40 scholarly articles. Please welcome to the studio Dr. Eugene Lipoff. Yay! <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you, peace in and peace out, actually, to the folks. Uh, that brought us together at Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois, uh, late last year. We were there uh, for Journey's Dream, and it was a phenomenal program and an event that is trying to put together like a, a Google Maps for uh, resources for the mentally challenged. And I got to facilitate a board of experts, all doctors. It was like nailing jello to a tree, I have to say. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> and Dr. Livov was one of the experts on there. And we followed up. And, and um, since he's an expert in something that many, many people have or know of someone with PTSD, I thought I would have him on the show to talk about that. So... First of all, for, for anybody who doesn't know, PTSD stands for? 
post-traumatic stress disorder. And how prevalent is that right now worldwide or the USA? Um, it, it, it depends. So women seems to have PTSD twice as often than the men. Wow, okay. So current thinking is that 6% of general population in U.S. and 12% of women in U.S. have PTSD. Wow, so we're talking millions. Big numbers. Big and numbers. And military, the numbers seem to be between 20% to 40%. 20 to 40 from, from being in war? In the military, In yes. the military. In the non-military. Uh, the amount of sexual assaults in this country, uh, it's about one out of three women suffer that in their lifetime. So if you think about it, 50% will probably develop PTSD. That's wow. why the number is so high. Wow. And and I, I it would be safe to say that most women who go through sexual uh, trauma will have PTSD of some kind. Mm, the, the current stats are... 50% will develop it. 50%. Okay, so not all. A huge number, Interesting. Not all. What would you say the, the reason, the number one, or what you think, why uh, one out of two? So why does the second one not develop that after sexual trauma? Is it because they'll s develop it later? Like you would think logically, if you went through sexual trauma, you would have post traumatic stress disorder. Right. So, well, there are, let me give you a broad answer to that. Okay. So uh, there is something called MST, military sexual trauma. Okay. Uh, primarily female military personnel. If women get MST, then their chance of developing PTSD is about 90%. 90%. Okay. So that's really high. Okay. And the thought there is it happens because there is no place of safety. Mm. So if you have, you're battling with the enemy, but you're being attack attacked by your own troops, so there is no place of safety. Got it. So maybe because the women who go through sexual trauma at home maybe have a support system. Right. It depends. It depends mm. on basically a couple of things predict PTSD. One, how do you deal with it afterwards? Are okay. you safe? Are you still being challenged with the same uh, abuser? Things okay. like that. Okay. Uh, if, if something happens but you continue to work with them, your chance of PTSD is much higher. Got it. Repeated and exposure. Correct. And two, it depends on the childhood. If you take two equal people, two twins, mm -hmm. right, the same genetics, mm -hmm. and then one of them has great childhood and has one trauma. Another one has bad childhood, abusive, things like that, has the same trauma. The one that had a bad childhood, the chance of developing PTSD is factors of magnitude more. Wow. So that makes on sense. Childhood as well. That that does make sense. So So it's almost like if you've had a bad childhood, right. <laughs> um, to work towards healing that part is is truly a, an effective way of of um, dealing with it. Well, I think it's even more more involved than that. Okay. In fact, I wrote a paper last year uh, that was published in Molecular Neurosciences, light journal, uh, <laughs> and basically what I was able to do is track what happens in epigenetics or what happens to DNA uh, during bad childhood. So your DNA actually gets changed. Really? Right. Wow. And we can talk about details of that. But what's interesting about it, and you know, this was based on other people's works, not just my right, concept. Right, right. But what's interesting about it, if you have the same trauma and you had bad childhood, I think a person needs to be more cognizant to get treatment earlier than later. Right. Right. And part of a way to avoid problems is with PTSD is meditation hmm. and yoga, which is something you know something about. Yes, sure. yes. Really interesting. Yeah. That That's really good to know. I can use that in my commercials for teaching it's meditation. True. It's true. But it's, uh, you, do you know that meditation is the only thing that's been shown to grow brain tissue back? Nothing else does. There you go. And I didn't pay him for that. So sign up for my <laughs> meditation classes. Go to my meetup. Science <laughs> is science. Yeah, the interesting. And so you've been a doctor for a little bit. A bit. Yes, a little bit. And um, I, you, you use oil of LA. You're not. You don't like. I use oil of LA. So we're ageless. But Absolutely. being that said, uh, I, I, I you just came off of the set of doctors. Uh, Correct. And it was your, how many times have you been on Doctors now? I think it's 16 appearance. 16 appearances. So they kind of like them. And uh, you just did a show on. Yeah, we, there was a lady we treated 
that uh, she had, she was a military nurse, and then um, a man tortured her with gasoline, Eww. and she got PTSD from that. Mm. So what did they ask you? Well, after she was on the show, then she was introduced to me by that, mm -hmm. and then I treated her, and the reason she was there is because this was seeing the effect of the treatment. Oh, and how was the treatment? She did great. She did great. She's doing amazing. Great. So let's get to that. So traditional therapies for PTSD, besides meditation, are therapy, right? Right. And um, some people, there's drugs that... It's pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals, right. okay. And and did you used to prescribe that? And No. You never did, okay. No, I'm, I'm a pain physician. I'm not a psychiatrist, so I don't do that work. Okay, so your your job is to treat pain and how did you come up with because you have this new um or relatively new treatment called s i'm not good with sgb SGB. Gain block. there you go that's why i don't remember it and and how did how did how did you even come up with that and and you know kind of give me take me back you're in your office one day. Minding my own business. <laughs> Minding your own business. <laughs> <laughs> and in comes the door. <laughs> no, so what happens there is the, I had a patient uh, that had severe hot flashes. And I sent it to my brother, who's an internal medicine doctor, okay. to treat hot flashes because I don't take care of hot flashes. Yeah. And he couldn't help her. And he <laughs> said, well, hot flashes and burning hand called CRPS complex regional pain syndrome is the same thing. So treatment of the burning hand is stellar ganglion block. He said, why don't you try that for hot flashes? Okay. Which I did. You, you, okay. And he told you to lot. do that and right. it helped her a lot. Okay. And then from there I published on that and then I had a lot of naysayers and they were saying, you don't know why it works so you shouldn't be doing it. Mm. So secondary to that, I read about 3,000 papers about SGB trying to figure out why it works. One of the papers was from Finland where they were doing clipping of sympathetic fibers in the chest to take away hand sweating and PTSD stuff. So then I was trying to figure that out. Okay. And then, go ahead. Okay, so so first of all, it's an injection. Correct. Okay, so it's an injection into the neck. Front of the neck. Into the front of the neck. On the right and side. On the right side, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and when you inject, it blocks something, right? That's why it's called the, the block. Right. It's, it blocks the sympathetic system, fight okay. and flight system. The fight and flight system. Okay. So you found that it worked for stopping the hand sweating from the Finland article. Right, but also that article also said it, it stopped the hand sweating and PTSD stuff. Okay, so they sort of were the pioneer of, of putting that in your head? Well, it was close. They weren't doing injections. They were doing surgical procedures in the chest. Okay. And then so you thought, well, let's try it for that. Right, because the fibers, neurological fibers, mm -hmm. eventually go in the neck, and I could catch them in the neck. Okay. And so you started trying? Right. On, on your kids? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> on people? Typically, no. <laughs> No, the first person <laughs> we treated, which we published on, actually, was um, robbed at gunpoint, and they hit him in the head. It was very ugly, and he was on his way to psychiatric uh, ward two months after the incident. Okay. And then my brother, that was also my brother's patient. <laughs> Say thank you, thank you to your brother. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they sent me this. He sent me this patient. I injected him, and he didn't have to be admitted to the hospital. Wow! It, it just immediate. Yeah, it works in about 30 minutes. Okay, so so tell me what the before and after is. So before he comes in and says, I can't get that out of my head, I can't get the the memory of being hit in the head and beaten and robbed. And so uh, my guess is, because I actually had someone um, run up behind me uh, when I was uh, running the John Robert Powers in Beverly Hills when I first moved here to California, and they came up behind me and um, jumped on me, you know, they pulled off my jewelry, and he had a knife. And so, um, luckily, across the street, this woman had her Doberman, was walking in Beverly Hills, let go of the dog because the dog was going crazy, and so he left. And for, 
I would say uh, three or four months, I couldn't fall asleep because I kept having that, that memory. And then um, even now, when someone's running up fast behind me, my palms, I, just talking about it, my palms get tingly. So do I have post-traumatic stress disorder? You have parts of it, yeah. Okay. Sure. Great. Yeah, you're just sweating. <laughs> Did you bring any injections? No. Um, I have a license so in four days, so I could potentially. <laughs> but go no, ahead. No, I, honestly, I'd forgotten about it mm -hmm. until we just started talking right. about this and, and your guy. So, so, But if you're listening and you're wondering who I'm talking to today and why I'm telling stories about being jumped, <laughs> you are tuned in to Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa. And today's guest is Dr. Eugene Lipoff, and he is a board-certified doctor, and he's a specialist in post-traumatic stress disorder. And we're talking about this new uh, cure, I would say, or remedy that uh, you inject in your neck, and it takes away the fight-and-flight syndrome which most or all PTSD uh, uh, sufferers have, correct? Yes. Yeah, so basically, I think one of the questions is what's causing PTSD? Right. And what can you do about it? Uh -huh. So the symptoms you were describing is hypervigilance. You're looking around, looking for threat, mm -hmm. can't sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are very common. Okay. And then you have physiological effect, hand sweating, you just mm -hmm. talked about, mm -hmm. and heart racing, okay. and you can't focus. Okay. Those are the signs. Well, I could explain some of the, some of my focus. <laughs> right. So, what what happens during PTSD? Let me just talk you through that. Yes, You'll please. see how it all works. Because okay. one of the questions people commonly ask me, and it took me years to figure it out, is why does it work? Mm -hmm. Because it sounds magical. Injection in the neck doing something to the brain. I mean, why would that happen? Mm -hmm. So, what happens is when somebody is stressed, had a severe incident, of some sort or another. Um, something called NGF, nerve growth factor, is produced in the brain that travels from the brain into the ganglion or connection of sympathetic nerves in the neck. Mm -hmm. Once it hits that area, it produces new nerve growth that's called sprouting. And, and that's as long the as hyper, the hypervigilance, right, right? The sprouting of the sympathetic nerves now promotes norepinephrine release. It's like being adrenaline, so you're always on. Ah. So as long as the NGF is there, it maintains sympathetic sprouting. Okay. So it turns out when you put local anesthetic on the ganglia, it takes away the NGF. Sprouting goes away, and that's called pruning. Okay. Norepinephrine. It does sound like a tree. It does It sound. is like a tree. Neuroscientists like, uh, they, I they guess like they want to be gardeners. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, but the point is, that's why a local anesthetic that lasts eight hours can last for years. The, the first military guy we treated, eight years ago, had two injections eight years ago, still doing great. Great, great. So long lasting because you're, 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 you're cauterizing the wound in a way, right? You're stopping where the, where the growth I'm is. Turning it off. You're turning it off. We're not cauterizing. Okay. This is just local anesthetic. Right, right. Sorry. Wrong, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we do do cautery of uh, nerves, but that's not being done. Here. Okay. Okay, so you're turning off the system that got um, revved up, revved up, and and you don't want it revved up because everything no. is out of balance. Homeostasis is off. Correct. Well, okay. it's interesting. Also, we've treated a lot of special ops people, mm -hmm. and they actually one of the big concerns is that am I going to be a sissy afterwards? Oh, good. Put the moose on the table. Why don't we? Good question. Right? Yeah, very good question. And it turns out I, I wish I'd asked that. It makes them <laughs> even better. At their jobs because they're focused. Focused. They're not yeah. scattered. Yeah, yeah, they're all over the place. Interesting, right. interesting. So <clears throat> uh, if someone is listening and they're interested in finding out how they can get this kind of treatment, how do they find you? So there are two easy ways to do it. One is look up www.healinghero.org www.healing, like the healer, healinghero.com. No, dot .org. Do, sorry, dot dot org. .org. It is also a non-for-profit. Yep. So we're always, we treat a lot of military, and we're always seeking funding for that. So anybody out there in your audience would like uh -huh. to help us, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, because if you want to help veterans, I think this is definitely, 
I hear more and more yeah. people coming back. I think I, I, as high as 80% of returning veterans have PTSD. Mm -hmm. Is Probably that 40? 40? Sure. Okay. I don't yeah, know the number I seems the to be flexible. Okay. We also would like to help abused women mm. because there is many more abused women by a factor of 10 probably with PTSD than the military. Right. So we'd, we'd like to just help as much as we can. Right. The other way to find us is 844-SGB-PTSD. Mm. Easy number. Okay. Eight. Lucky number. Four, four. Four plus four is eight. <laughs> right? So so you, well, that's why we're connected. 844-SGB, which is the Stella, Stella Ganglion Block. Mm -hmm. And then PTSD. PTSD. Oh, it's not that difficult. Okay. I agree. Dot, dot. No, that's the phone number. That's the phone no number. Dot. Oh, that's even easier. <laughs> okay. Is it an 800 number or just a 844? Yeah. Oh, 844. Yeah. Okay. Lucky so, number. It is a lucky number. It is definitely a lucky number. And as as uh, the good doctor just said, you know, I'm all about if you are if you have time on your hands, if you have money, you know, it's not the end of the year anymore. But certainly, this is a worthwhile place to invest your time and money because it is helping and shining light in areas of darkness. And the one darkness that is definitely uh, something we'd actually talked offline about this and about me sort of being the um, uh, 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 one of the spokespeople is uh, MST, which is military sexual trauma. And, uh, you know, we can do more than just go, oh, that's terrible, when we watch the news on it because they do every once in a while do segments on that. But if you can, you can picture someone who's not just serving our country out there outside facing danger and then coming back to the barracks and then facing danger there. I think this is definitely an area we need to do a lot more uh, shining of light in. So um, MST, military sexual trauma, uh, if you are at all interested in that area and getting involved in, um, we're looking for all levels of both donors and expertise or you know any names who want to get involved uh, you know, there's a lot of people involved in cancer, um, Alzheimer's. I think this is a just as important of an area to get involved with. I agree. The other thing is if people can or do not want to give us funds, we can definitely use air miles because 90% oh. of people we treat through a non-for-profit is from out of state. That's an excellent idea. So people who don't have the funds to actually find... Uh, and get to the clinic, uh, you, you don't turn people away. You just try to find a way to get them to you. We do try. Yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. So air models, great idea, great idea. So so I hope you feel good for what you're doing because I think it's pretty S awesome what you're doing. Seeing people improve in people's lives is an unbelievable gift to a physician. Yeah. Especially with something you came up with. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that, I, I know I'm going to give you the, uh, and I don't give it to all my guests, but I'm going to award you with Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll do a little applause on that. <laughs> Yeah, I would say I probably give it one out of four or five guests on the Thank show you. because I, I do think it's it's wonderful. I mean, you could, especially doctors, uh, before I congratulate you, I have to tell you that one of the jokes my, do my dad did, and I apologize if this is offensive, but it's just one of the funniest jokes. That's okay. <laughs> What's the difference between God and a doctor? Nothing. <laughs> So this is perfect for me to say it because he just said it like that. This is perfect. So my dad's joke, and he was a PhD doctor, like uh -huh. and so he said the, dif the, the difference is God doesn't think he's a doctor. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. And, and he just said the perfect answer so I don't feel bad for telling the joke on the air. <laughs> but it is, it is totally... You know, one of those, you know, it's. I know you went through a lot of schooling and it's not easy and the insurance and everything, it's not easy to be a doctor. But it's easy to rest on your laurels as a doctor, but for you to want to continue to learn and, and grow and find areas that you can specifically help with, I think that's awesome. It, it has been an honor to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. And um, what what would your now uh, when we were at that, your son actually came up on stage and started talking. And could you just explain a little bit about that because I think that's a beautiful story. Your for about my that. son. Yeah. Yeah. So he's had some challenges, uh, emotional challenges, and um, so he asked me and said, "You know, would would this?" Block help me because he had a lot of he didn't have trauma but he had s- kind of signs of being um, hyper vigilant and have difficulty sleeping and then we did the procedure for him so uh, that's going to be actually um, we'll we'll have it on our website it's going to be out I think in the twenty second of this month that's beautiful but yeah he, he came to and I, I th- he did an amazing job speaking I thought you saw it yes he did I, that's, how old uh, is he. He's 14. He's 14. So yeah. actually, I started crying when I was listening to yeah. him. That yeah, was pretty I saw hard. that. That's why yeah. I wanted you to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. you know, treating a family is very difficult. Mm-hmm. But I would mm-hmm. say in my particular space here, I'm the most qualified. So it's why mm-hmm. I did it. Mm-hmm. What, what would you say the best thing about being a doctor is and the worst thing about being a doctor is? Well, the best is when you can actually help people. Um, improve their lives or change their lives. Mm-hmm. And like, for example, and there are a couple of scenarios. One is PTSD, as we talked about. Mm-hmm. You know, people taking tons of medications. You know, a soldier we treated eight years prior. Um, he tried to kill his wife three times. He was going to be either in jail. He, she could have been dead. He was totally immobilized on drugs. He was taking uh, pharmaceuticals. After the block, I still get crazy. Uh, I still get Christmas cards from them. And then they're happily married. They're doing great. He's off all medications. He's full-time employed. And we have a lot of people like that, mm-hmm. which is pretty amazing. Definitely. Uh, half flashes, we've treated a lot of people with that, especially breast cancer women. And they're able to stay on their aramidase inhibitors like tamoxifen, which actually potentially is life-saving. Mm-hmm. Because the current therapy for half flashes is not very effective. Okay. Taking estrogen, excuse me, long term, has a lot of downside. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's the, I think that's been really pretty impressive. And you know, in my regular work doing pain medicine, we are able to help a lot of people, especially headaches. People had it for years. Mm-hmm. Other things. What percent of the people you treat for pain would you say it's all in their head? Oh, well, that's a great question. Thank um, you. You mean it's a psychological issue instead of biological issue? Well, I do not know. Mm-hmm. I focus on the biology of it. Okay. So if I keep doing things and nothing works and the scans don't show anything, sometimes that's not the right person for me. Because mm-hmm. there are some people come in and they would like to have medications and then... There's really no reason for them to have pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is not a patient that's going to continue seeing me. Okay. So you, what do you think about doctors who, you know, these days it seems like you go in for anything and then you, as soon as you say you can't sleep, you can't, you're, you're worried, um, you don't feel good, you're unhappy, mm-hmm. and then we'll try this. And it's an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety pill or, anti- or pain medication um, what's your take on all of that? Well, there, 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 that was not a single question, was that? No, <laughs> I have a habit of doing that. I kind of, I kind of like, yeah, and then you, say. you choose whichever one so you go. So let, let me take it apart, if you don't. Okay, mind. no. So we we'll start with opioids. Yeah. So opioids, um, the science has changed of opioids. When I was finishing my residency and fellowship. The idea was you want to keep people out of pain, and opioids were the greatest things in sliced bread. Uh, that has changed due to 65,000 people died last year from opioid-related overdoses. Mm. Some medicinal, some heroin. Also, you know, there are a lot of issues associated with that. Mm-hmm. Also, high dose of opioids has now starting to show that high doses can produce opioid hyperalgesia, meaning... The more pain medication you take, the more pain you actually have. Wow. Okay. So it's been, we've been working very hard to reduce pain medications on most people. 
and we pretty much don't start anybody on new pain medication. Maybe very, very occasionally, very brief periods, mm-hmm. long-term mm-hmm. medications slowly are going away. Okay, good. So I think that's I happening. I approve of that. Um, and then uh, due to federal oversight and things like that, a lot of pain physicians and primary care physicians no longer write pain medications. The problem is, yes, you are potentially helping, right? but what we're seeing is a lot of people who have genuine pain, we can't help them anymore. Why? Because nobody runs pain medication. I mean, somebody had seven spine surgeries and they have severe pain and they want to, you know, to get their decent pain control, they need a hundred unit equivalent of morphine. Oh, and and then CDC says you should only have 50. Okay. And that becomes a challenge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to be more so. Wow. This, I, I want to come back and talk yeah. a lot more about uh, pain medication and pain. For those of you who have just tuned in, um, we are about to take a break to thank the sponsors that make this show possible. We'll be back in two and two with Dr. Eugene Lipoff. Remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out. Are you tired of being tired? Are you ready for more balance in your life? Then come to the beach and work with Dr. Marissa, motivational speaker, author, organizational psychologist, and host of the 2016 Podcast of the Year Top 10 in Health, award-winning show. Take my advice, I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. If you are ready to choose more hope and happiness, no matter what's happening around you, then go to www.drmarissa.tv today. Do you know someone suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder? Well, if they are still suffering, there is a new fast-acting treatment called the SGB, Stellate Ganglion Block, which reduces PTSD fight and flight symptoms using a simple injection of local anesthetic in the neck. Results are usually seen in under an hour with a success rate of over 75%. For more information, visit www.healinghero.org. That's HealingHero.org. And we are back. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon Pacific Standard Time out of Hollywood, California. Sunset Gower Studios where scandal and newsroom and heroes and murder she wrote is film but there's no scandal on this show no gossip and no k-words no kardashian talk i want you to focus on your own hope and happiness and thursdays and saturdays out of my cnbc nbc syndicated news radio channel kcaa am 1050 fm 102.3 and fm 106.5 everywhere on iHeartRadio. and today we are talking about pain no not about you being a pain in the neck, but you are actually going to get relief by getting an injection in your neck if you have post-traumatic stress disorder. I have the leading researcher and doctor who has found a way to block the fight and flight symptoms that come with PTSD. His name is Dr. Eugene Lipoff. He's in the studio with me today here from Chicago, Illinois, and he is talking about pain. So we just started talking about you know, real pain, not real pain, and pain medication. So the people who are continuously um, hooked on opioids now, and now uh, our 43rd president actually has now a war, official war, on opioids, what would you say for anyone who's listening who is currently in pain knowing that their pain medication does not work, what should they do? Well, in an ideal world, you can get your pain treated. So, for example, one of the best things I think works well for pain is uh, stimulators. Putting an implant into the spine turns off pain using electrical current. Hmm. There's no possible risk or... No side effects. Well, there are possible side effects. But the point is there is no drugs. The other thing is, keep in mind, there are two types of pain. There's neuropathic pain or nerve pain Mm -hmm. that is opioid resistant, Mm -hmm. meaning you take as much morphine as you want, but it won't help. Okay. Are those the kinds of pain? What is the the autoimmune pain? No. No, that's different. That's different. Crushing nerve pain, spine surgery pain, things like that. Okay. Hip replacement pain. That could be nociceptive. Okay. That's probably regular pain. Okay. So that's probably responsive narcotic. But the point is... As pain physicians, such as myself, Mm -hmm. 
we do various injections. We can burn certain nerves to take away pain. We try very hard to not to use narcotics and try to get people off narcotics. Right. For, for part of the reason that we just did over, over the break is that uh, they're finding that it will actually give you more pain. Not, not only will it take a, not take away your pain, it will give you more pain. So it can. It sure. can. It can. So if someone is going through surgery, like I'm about to go through some foot surgery myself, mm -hmm. what would you suggest in managing the pain to, to that, that you don't get hooked on? Because why, why is it so easy to get hooked on pain medication? Well, there's, there's a number of reasons. One, it depends on your personality style. Mm. Do you have addictive personality style or not? <laughs> if you do, that's I, a I'm addicted story. to pleasure. In, in well, a good way. G-rated pleasure. <laughs> well, opioids can definitely make you feel very warm and cuddly. Okay. And that's comfortable probably what, and, mm. yeah. and it takes about one to two weeks to start to get addicted to narcotics. Okay. So if you're going to take it, take it under five days. Under five days. Plus... Many societies don't use any pain medications. Okay. Like Russia, they don't use pain medication. Right. Germany, don't use it. So it's amazing what you can do for pain control, mm -hmm. elevation, mm -hmm. ice, little Advil, and living with some pain, you can, it's not going to yeah. kill you. Yeah, it's not going to kill you, for sure. I actually um, had two stitches, like in just from the biopsy, mm -hmm. and I was very proud of myself. I did exactly what you did, and I, I didn't even have to take Tylenol. I just kept saying, you know, this is going to pass. Yeah. And it's a... Uh, well, keep in mind what the body does. Yeah. When the body does, when that happens, is it produce endorphins. Endorphins is natural narcotics, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not as addictive. Mm -hmm. And you can make your own. You yeah. don't have to pay anybody to do it. Right, right. You don't have to ingest it. Right. It's internally created. Right. But yeah. the problem is if you take narcotics, it suppresses your endorphins. So now you can't make your own. Wow. After how long for that? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know the data on that, but that's definitely there. Mm. And also, if you're on a long-term narcotic, and now you get cut off for whatever the reason, mm -hmm. that is a gateway to heroin. Because mm. heroin is also a narcotic. Okay. Okay. Now, that's why it's, you know, we're working very hard to try to reduce it and change it. Right. Right. From f you're in that field. Right. We're yeah. trying to get off of that. Right. right. We're trying to really help people with that. How much of pain is, um, I asked you already about in the head, but how much of pain is self, uh, self-induced? Like, can, or, or how much of pain can you manage on your own? Like, have you, when you, when people come to you in, in pain, mm -hmm. what do you tell them first off to try before you do anything more? Like, how? It depends on the pain. So let's mm -hmm. say somebody comes in and they were lifting a couch and now they have severe sciatica going yeah. down the leg. Good, good example. Right. So we go, okay, the first thing we should do is try to take care of the pain with an injection. Put steroids in the spine and it reduces the irritation of the nerve and the pain stops. That's it. Okay. You don't do anything else. Okay. But, and what's, what's the biggest myth around pain? What's the biggest, you know, you wish that... I, d I did this question in Chicago. Oh. You know, what, yeah. uh, what do you wish that the public knew about pain? Or well, pain I, I think a lot of times when people are not screaming or grimacing, they can still be in pain. So mm -hmm. chronic pain and acute pain is two different things. Somebody who's been there a long time, people are used to it, but then it becomes gray, right? Somebody comes in and they look fine, Mm -hmm. They move fine, and they yet they think we need to give them a lot of narcotics. That becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. But when somebody is not complaining of pain, but you can see they're moving badly, and that's what becomes a gray area. Is it possible to be? Is it possible to become addicted to being in pain? Kind of like the hypochondriac. You're thing. asking a psychiatric question. Oh, okay, so I, I assume so. I mean, there are people who are masochistic. So people cause their own pain, yeah. but there's all type of pain. Yeah. Right? There's emotional pain. Some people like to go through the severe pain, and then you're producing endorphins, so you're actually getting high. So if you go crazy, you can say somebody who's a marathon runner who really puts the body in a lot of harm, love it because they get a lot of uh, 
positive feelings out of mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. But you can also say it's accomplishment. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. Right, right, right. I, I, I just, you know, I, I understand the biological aspect better. Yeah, yeah. So what would you say um, your your biggest success that you can think of when someone came in for pain? Oh, for pain? Yeah. Um, someone who had I, been I, to... Yeah, I remember a 85-year-old woman who couldn't straighten up and she was sitting there crying and both of her daughters were holding her hands and she had a number of surgeries and it was extremely sad. She took one Norco and she was like asleep for two days <laughs> and they were like, they said, you have to help us, doctor. So I put an implant in and she came back and she had no pain. That's great. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Did she give you a hug? Yes. <laughs> and the both okay. daughters. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> great. That's great. W- what haven't you been able to help, that is? No, oh, there's plenty of people I cannot help. You know, somebody had multiple surgeries, and one of the, um, where we get into problem is, you know, the coverage, the insurance coverage is getting worse and worse, and there are certain people, I can do a lot of different things, mm-hmm. but it's getting to the point where a lot of times I can't do half of my skills, cannot use half my skills due to the insurance coverage. Yeah. Because they're saying it's not proven enough, it's this, it's that. Yet they have no problem doing multiple surgeries and giving tons of narcotics. Mm -hmm. So that makes no sense. Right. So that's the old, this is the the shift that we're trying to go through now. Yours is not even considered a homeopathic kind of approach. It's not, you know, this is still, you know, more traditional. It's allopathic. Right. But um, still the insurance company, is this ever going to end? Like, you know, these days it's like you don't even know whether to get it or you have to get it or you don't have to get it. And is it Obamacare or Trump no care or, you know, what, what is it? <laughs> I, I think it's going to get solution? resolved after I, after I leave medicine. After it's you leave medicine? Okay, before. it's not going to happen before. I don't think, it, I don't think <laughs> that's going to happen. Okay. Is there anything that people can do to, to try to affect a change in this? I think it's more of a political arena question than mm-hmm. um, I, I think hopefully, you know, th- there, are, there are some initiatives where people will focus on results mm-hmm. instead of what uh, their committees of experts talk about. Okay. And if you look at the committees of experts, a lot of them have their own particular agenda or their particular perspective. Okay. Okay. So... If someone's listening and you have, you think you have PTSD or you know you have it or you know someone who has it, you know to go to healinghero.org. Is, and if someone knows that this is, they've tried a number of things and they want to consult with you, do they do it that way as well? Or they call that number, the 844 I can do that. SG... S- <laughs> 844-SGB. SGB. Say it with me. PTSD. 844-SGB. <laughs> PTSD. Or they can go to advancedpainclinics.org. And there's a thing there that they can fill out, and then they would get a call back and get go through like a a, um, questionnaire or something like that with you. Right, and we'll figure out what what needs to be done. Or right, so yeah, there is a lot of things we can do. Uh, We've had people come from Canada to be treated Mm -hmm. um, and other countries, but it's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. But it's hard there, there is a solution, and, and, and that's the good thing. That's what I'm all about is staying in the solution. And uh, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you wanted to cover before I ask you the last question? I, I think the key point is, like, my, uh, my email is hope for size at gmail.com. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. So okay. the, the point is hope as the same thing you're talking about. Yeah. So I think one thing I would love to have people – Think about when they have PTSD or hot flashes. There is actually hope in the horizon. We can help you, or hopefully you'll get soon will be more available for mm-hmm. multiple reasons. But hope is coming. Don't die. Right. Don't give so up. Many, so Don't many people die from PTSD. Do they? Yeah. Well, What's the suicide rate for military personnel is about 20 per day right now. What? Yeah, that's a huge number, and that's unacceptable. That should not 20 be. 20 a day? 20 per day. That's about the number right now. Oh. In fact, uh, President Trump just uh, had an executive order that, I think two days ago, I got a notice from AMA 
that we need to have a more aggressive psychological treatments, more effective psychological treatment yeah. to prevent that. Other thing, if I may throw in, yes, there was please. an article written by Dr. Crystal from Yale, and he reviewed all the current therapeutics, and he found they're all useless. Oh, no. SGB was not part of that analysis. Okay. But okay. we're talking about pharmaceuticals primarily. Right. Psychological, some of them are effective, but all pharmaceuticals are useless pretty much. Wow. That was his finding. And wow. He, he's a head of psychiatry at Yale. So he knows something When did about that come it. out? Uh, the last one came out six months ago. And yet, why are pharmaceutical companies still in the game? And why are doctors still prescribing so easily? Time to wake up. Time, it is time. It, you heard it here, and we're all going to. So, so I guess the other thing is, if you're not feeling good, let's look at some alternatives before we start taking stuff. And I've been on this bandwagon for a long time. I'm not, I'm not anti-drug at all. I think that you know there are. It's a t there's a time and a place, and it does help some people. But the fact is that m it doesn't help more than it helps. The oversubscript, because uh, the book that's coming out that I'm writing right now, it, the perfect audience is all the people who are taking antidepressants and antidepressants still are anxious and depressed right. and have side effects on top of it. So I'm not saying I'm the only answer. I'm not saying you're the only answer. No. But try other answers before. Right, meditation. And the other thing, keep meditation. in mind, benzodiazepines like Xanax, Valium, also affect your memory. And also potentially then damages your brain. Yeah. So you got to be very careful using those. Yeah, good. That's from a doctor. That's not for me. So I've been on this little horse wagon for a little while now because I just I think that people ingest and think that that's a solution too quickly. So yeah, and and I love what you said about hope. And and here's the thing: there's two ways to be in pain. There's one way where you're in pain and you think it's never going to end, and you're hopeless. Or you can have the pain, same pain, and uh, be on the scale of, you know, it's not always going to feel like this. There are solutions and can be hopeful. So I'm wishing for all of you listening right now that you're going, if you're in pain, that you look at the side of hope. There is a solution. I brought one of them uh, on the air today, uh, healinghero.org. Um, there's plenty of other, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've got natural healing. I've got all different kinds of shows. There's something for you. So go out there and don't give up. Stay on the, stay on the side of hope. Beautiful. My last question is always what, who would you like to thank for helping you be who you are? I would say my wife. Robin. Mm, that's beautiful. And she's a yoga teacher. Hi, Robin. Peace in, peace out. You have to come over to the beach and we'll do yoga together. I'll do my Tai Chi Gong and she can do the she traditional. She does Kundalini yoga. Does she do Kundalini? Okay, good. No wonder you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for my wonderful guest today, Dr. Eugene Lipoff. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. All right. And now, oh, he gets one more clap. Oh, one more. Yeah, one more. <laughs> That's the affirmative goodbye. <laughs> and we are at the end of the show, and I invite you to step up to my balance bar. And today, I'm going to start with my Asian Oprah giveaway is 1,000 free tickets to the Best of You Expo, and that is in London, England in February. Go to my Facebook page, and you will find the details of the link if you know anybody that's living in London, England, that is where I want you to go and, and enjoy the expo. If you're not living in that vicinity, then you can make plans to come see me at the Best of You Expo here in Los Angeles. That is in March 23rd and 24th. So make sure you may, uh, hold that on your calendar. I'll be teaching and speaking broadcasting and being the best that you can be. So that is the first thing. The second thing is... Please, if you haven't already joined the 21-Day Fast from Complaining with Dr. Marissa, where I try to give you a tip a day to keep you from complaining for 21 consecutive days. Today is day 16, and eating a complaint. Here's your balance tip. Eating a complaint leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Rinsing with gratitude or a compliment restores my kissability. So 
Today, we are thinking about all of the benefits of not complaining. If you haven't gotten the app where you can post uh, how well you have done on the fast, that is at, on both platforms, 21 Day Fast or uh, Dr. Marissa, and you'll find that there. It was made by teenagers and it's only 99 cents. And as per usual, all of the proceeds that go towards, that you get from my balance bar go toward my piecework around the planet. Um, also, thank you to Purple Planet Music for always uh, giving me music to go in and out by, as well as put my promos on. And it's not too late to uh, sign up and save $300. My annual, this will be my eighth uh, annual uh, balance in the vortexes in the Red Rocks of beautiful Sedona, Arizona. It is always the weekend after Mother's Day, May 19th, 20th this year. So if you sign up before Valentine's Day where you uh, invest in loving yourself, then you will save $300. So just go to my website, the number 4balance.org, and you can sign up there and reserve your spot on the healing mat. I am also... Uh, still, I have one spot open for life balance coaching this year. So if you're looking to improve your own happiness to 88% and come to the beach and work with me, uh, just go ahead and do a, a call. You can book it on the website. Next week, even though this is not a music show traditionally, I've had a lot of big music names such as Billboard number 1 Keiko Matsui, Paul Cardall, to Tony Tennille from the Captain and Tennille, Aaron Dickens from Manhattan Transfer, and next week, someone that we met in Chicago, the lead singer of Jefferson Starship. That's uh, Kathy Richardson, and she'll be here in studio, and we're going to have calling in, Sha Na Na. So you won't want to miss it. That's next week here on the show about hope and happiness. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out. to stay it's a